Welcome to the Texas Go Radio Show. I'm your host, Matorius. This is Owen Benjamin, six years ago, on stand-up comedy in, uh, on Reddit. Why a comedian would choose to leave L.A. In less than three weeks, myself, my wife, and our three dogs are driving from Los Angeles to a little town near Lake Placid in the middle of the Adirondack Mountains to live. My, wife, my friends and fellow members of the entertainment industry have been giving me a puzzled look when I tell them this. Usually when a comedian or an actor leaves Los Angeles, it is an act of defeat. When people leave, usually it's a look of sympathy for the departing. A look that says, you gave it your best shot, good luck to you. But people look at me like, weren't you just on TV like a month ago? Is someone in your family sick? A move just like this one is why I got into entertainment in the first place. I started stand-up comedy in college at 19. I opened for an unheard of comedian in a cafeteria and did surprisingly well. When I watch the old tapes, I see all the countless flaws and fear responses that I was unaware of. I cringe at my most const- at my constant pacing as if I was Chris Rock entertaining a 10,000 Cedar and not an amateur entertaining 70 students that were there for the free ice cream bars. But it's obvious I had a knack for it. The comedian I was opening for inspired me. He was the opposite of me physically. I was giant and white. He was short and black. I was from a small town. He was from a city. But his comedy crossed through all cultures and made the 60 white, 61 white country kids die laughing. As well as the nine black kids from the city who probably originally requested him laugh. He was nice to me and I wanted to do what he did. His name was Kevin Hart. So on his departure, <laughs> in this post, he has a whole paragraph uh, to name drop Kevin Hart. <laughs> so I don't know if this is him talking or what, but as his career grew over the years, I always remember that feeling before he was the biggest comedian in the world that we... Okay, so he's still talking about Chris Hart. Or Kevin Hart. Biggest comedian in the world that we are all just carbon and desire... Trying to... And desire trying to get laughs. He's... Desire trying to get laughs from strangers we try to understand. I pushed the student association to bring in my favorite comedian, Greg Fitzsimmons, who I also opened for. Afterwards, we talked about his son named Owen, super rare name at the time, <laughs> and a lot of books that my fellow classmates were unaware of, but he knew well. It was heaven. When I graduated in 2003, I was going to go to law school. My dad is a public speech persuasion professor with a PhD in rhetoric and a charisma that can light up any room. I love seeing the patterns of history, the chess matches of verbal arguments, and of course the invisible pull an individual can have on an audience. I was going to be a lawyer, but then a recession hit. My advisor, Dr. Scott, amazing human being, said, since there won't be a lot of jobs out there anyway, take this opportunity to do what you would do if money didn't matter. Law school will still be there in a year. Without hesitation, I thought comedy. My best friend since kindergarten had just graduated from Cornell and got a high-paying corporate job, but he felt a similar draw. We both took the economic obstacle as an opportunity to do what we truly wanted. When expectations fall away, there's nothing holding you back from doing what you truly are. So we did. Our path through entertainment was very different, but both very rewarding. He's a very successful television producer and I am a successful, at times, comedian. My goal was to be able to perform at a college like Kevin Hart and Greg Fitzsimmons, and I did that. 
Add on three specials, movies with my childhood heroes, three years on a sitcom, and every other possible thing 19-year-old me could have asked for. So why leave? Because somewhere along the way, things shifted. Expectations have a way of adapting just like human genes. Success became my Achilles heel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Success became my Achilles heel. <laughs> With the money flowing, I bought a condo. I was fortunate enough to rent that condo out and buy another one. I was on a roll. Then I met the love of my life, Amy. Long story short, we started a family and the drive that made me want to be on the road three weeks a month, taking money and crushing audiences, shifted. My values changed. I now want to be with her and my baby more and not sit in a Best Western off a highway. I can spend hours just staring at the door waiting for showtime as my son laughed for the first time and my wife watches Game of Thrones without me. In chaos comes opportunity. LA's entertainment world is in chaos. The internet has changed the gatekeepers. I used, the, I used to audition or take meetings and have a small group of people select me to be the, to be the one for a project. <sighs> now those same people desperately attempt to get someone from YouTube or Vine to star in their projects, hoping their audience come with them. When the singer Pitbull got a development deal at ABC Family, I knew this town was lost. As a great Doug Stanhope said once, blind coyotes in the desert lung lunging at anything that makes a noise. Now I'm not saying these network executives are dumb. In fact, it is the smart move to do what they are doing. They need eyeballs and these are the people with them. The reality is, however, that a girl who is famous on Instagram for doing squats and tight pants knows nothing about comedy. These executives don't like this any more than we do, but it is the, re the reality. And in this comes opportunity. Just like with the recession that hit the country as I left college, this chaos is a new opportunity. If LA needs you to get them eyeballs, they just devalued themselves, so now there is no reason to stay. So my wife and I asked ourselves, what to, what do we miss? Family. So in this, it's he's pretty much admitting that, in a roundabout way, that one of the reasons why he left is because he was no longer a hot commodity. That's what that sounds like. Now, we all know why he left but it was a tough decision between her family in Seattle and mine in upstate New York the plus to Seattle is it's closer to LA more happening and her family is awesome my region ended up winning out because my brother has two young girls and is about to have a son so Walter will have cousins his age also land is way cheaper there which brings me to the main reason why we are leaving money is not the only currency in the world you're being tricked if you think that. Many other currencies trump money. Time, stress, community. We're going from a $6,000 a month mortgage to a $900 a month mortgage. That means we are increasing dramatically the most valuable currency in the universe. Time. I now no longer have to be gone three weeks a month. Stress is another currency. The stress of not being able to see an opportunity for the comedic wonder that it is <laughs> the stress of not being able to see an opportunity for the comedic wonder that it is and only for the money I am paid is a very costly debt that I am sick of paying and community. This is written by someone with a 147 IQ. You can just tell. I will greatly miss my comedy community I have developed in the 13 years I've lived in L.A. I went from waiting in the back for someone to not show up to having my likeness painted on the wall in a mural in a mural, and my picture hung by the box office. Where is that? Where is Owen Benjamin's face painted on a wall? <laughs> 
And what wall is that? Is it still there? Did it even happen? We'll probably never know. The greatest minds and the warmest hearts I've ever encountered have been in that wonderful haven for misfits. And it will be missed. But the community of, of grandparents, brothers, nieces, nephews, and neighbors that know your name will be heaven. Oh, that's such a sad thing. Six years later, he has zero. He has nobody. None of those people. Some's passed away, but others he pushed away because he is such an utterly horrible human being. That's insane and sad. That is so sad. Got ran out, ran out of his brother's hometown for being just a self-righteous prick with zero accountability. That's so sad. Oh, that's sad, man. We will still come back to L.A. for work now and then. No, he won't. Well, I, he's trying to now. He he so would. If <laughs> he so would, man. We will still come back to L.A. for work now and then, and probably live here for stretches in the future. But this chaotic time allowed us to reach for another for another desire, one that. <coughs> Excuse me. One that. Where are we at? One that we held off on while. Held off on while the money. Held off on. While the money. <laughs> I was making was too good to pass up. Now that LA isn't coddling me. With outrageous salaries. Or enchanting me with the ability to actually speak. With my heroes. We can pursue what our hearts. Yeah no. He's actually being honest right here. He's being honest. The reason why he left LA is because. The jobs dried up. That's absolute proof right there. Now that LA isn't coddling me with outrageous salaries or enchanting me with the ability to actually speak with my heroes, we can pursue what our hearts tell us we want now. That's crazy that he lies about. That. He's it, That's insane, man. I'm not quitting comedy. <clears throat> Comedy's quitting me. No. I'm not quitting comedy. In fact, just like any choice I've made in the past that comes from an honest place, I'm confident this will only help it. Our bills will be be so low that we can focus on living a life that will inspire me to create more, enjoy it more, and then share it with the people who want to hear jokes about a life they relate to. A lot more than a guy staring at a door in a Best Western off a highway wishing he could sleep next to his family. I love you all for being supportive of the things I've written, the podcasts I've made, and the videos I upload because the future is in this. A direct connection to you. If the gatekeepers of comedy want to chase Pitbull and girls who do squats on Instagram, let them. I will find a new gate and hopefully get what I make to the people who enjoy it. He lost his opportunities. That's what that... He has, in his own words... And he has twisted this so much. That is crazy, man. If you hit the enter key twice, you create a paragraph. Would make this wall of text much easier to read. This was my first Reddit post ever. Noted, next time I'll format better. You can still change it or double space enter. Didn't know that. If LA needs you to get them eyeballs, they just devalued themselves. So now there's no reason to stay. This is so true. Thanks for sharing, Owen. We've met a few shows. <clears throat> We've, this is Apollo Screed. We've met at a few shows in LA and I enjoy chatting with you about comedy. A lot of headliners don't stick around or talk or only talk to comics they recognize. So thanks for being one of the cool ones. One of my favorite parts of comedy is the hangs after. <clears throat> I'll still be back a bunch. I just need to throw down roots in a place with seasons and blood relatives. Man, that's so six in six years. Oh, dude. Long story short. <laughs> that's funny. One of my heroes used to call it following your bliss. Well done on your part. I hope you have oodles of fortune that the tax man can't touch. Thanks. Yeah, that's what's that's what got me into comedy in the first place. To ignore it would be insane. I'm still in comedy. I'm just going from Blockbuster to Netflix. 
The internet has gotten rid of the need for brick and mortar. I'm moving to LA to pursue comedy now. I've been couch surfing for three weeks and might have just finally got a place locked down and a day job to support myself. This is disheartening and yet beautiful to hear, but you know what? There's still kids out here with th with thunder in our hearts, with real knack for comedy. Z Breeze, I wonder how your life is going. <laughs> Hopefully it's going well. And genuine connection with the audience. It's not all Vine deals and YouTube. Wow. Your decision is a beautiful one. I hope I'm lucky enough to have a loving family that like that one day. But just know there's still going to be kids out here banging on the pavement every day with tenacity and talent. And I'm going to get mine one day too. The torch isn't out. It's just being borrowed for a second by someone who ain't running with it. Best of wishes or best of luck to you and your family. I'm glad you've contributed to comedy. Thank you. All right, FWIW, I'm an L.A. comic, and you're not making a mistake. Owen's in a much better place in his career where he can make this decision and remain a working stand-up. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so he has, he's going to do a special uh, sometime this year. For the first time, he's going to step foot on stage for the first time in, what, two, three years? So he hasn't been so half the half of this time from six years ago, at least, he hasn't been a working stand up. LA is a great town to build your chops. A lot of amazing stand ups are running shows every day here. It's a great scene right now. Agreed, LA and New York are both amazing places to meet people. You will know and work with for life. I'll still be coming back here a lot. Who knows? Maybe this Vine Star stuff will f with figure itself out and the industry will be gatekeepers again. Until then, I'm out. Oh, I'll still be coming back here a lot. Who knows? Maybe this Vine Star stuff with figure itself out and the industry will be gatekeepers again. Until then, I'm out. Huh. Yeah, I really appreciate hearing that. What are some of the best open mics to hit up in your opinion? He ain't going to answer that, is he? he yeah, I think he did. Uh, yeah. I like mics that do their best to cut down on click clickishness. East side mics are always packed, but I personally feel like you only get laughs in those rooms if you're friends with the people in the scene. I did Karma Lounge, but I think it shut down. There's a bi-weekly mic in Echo Park that's good called Yard Work. Tribal Cafe also has an okay one. The Comedy Bureau.com is your friend in all things LA comedy. You'll find the rooms you, you jive with. Also, be sure to join LA Com Comedians Facebook groups. Lots of mic flyers get posted there. Wow, those are amazing resources. Thanks so much. Really, that's going to be hugely helpful. And Owen Benjamin says, not sure, but there are a ton of them. Back in the day, there was a site called Chuckle Monkey where comics could find open mics. It probably, it's probably been sued for implying all monkeys chuckle by social advocates. I remember hanging at the improv and the store and meeting other comics and whoever has restaurant jobs, try and get your own show going there. I used to do that when I was a busboy. Easy to promote too, because you can promote to tables you wait on. Just going to regular shows at the improv and, and, and the store or those places hold open mics. They're probably lottery now though. Yeah. Owen Benjamin says, you made the right call coming here. I'll still be back <clears throat> and forth. Great place to make a name for yourself. I'm just in a weird crossroads where I have enough credits and skill to tour and work, but I don't have one of those hire me levels of name either. It's a good time for me to go, but for a lot of people, it's a great time to stay. <clears throat> I'm just in a weird crossroads where I have enough credits and skill to tour and work. So he could be a road comic. 
but don't have one of those F you hire me level of name either. He, he wasn't getting what he wanted. He wasn't getting the jobs that he wanted. Nice try tricking me into re to read. <laughs> Great read, by the way. Good luck. Thanks. Holy wall of text, Batman. Yes, Robin. It looks as if this villain could use a return to prison. This was my first post I've ever done so on Reddit. Still trying to understand how this works. I'll get better with spacing. God, S-T-F-U, about the paragraphs. The man took time to write something personal to share with his fans and our community. If you can't be an adult but want to be an English teacher, then go to, go to a school. It's okay. The comments are surprisingly nice considering the internet is littered with human trash. I was actually surprised I wasn't bashed more, but yeah, I, know, I now know people need better spacing to read. Loved you, on, uh, loved you, Legion of Skanks. I actually pulled into a parking lot while I was driving when I was listening to LOS just to Google you because I liked your appearance on there. Love them. Podcasting is where it's at. That's why it's a great time to leave LA. Internet has changed the gatekeepers. Oh, and it's Noonan. I think this is awesome. You're doing what I wish more talented comics do. Chad Daniels is another guy I look up for that. Look up to for that. People look at me like I'm crazy when I say I love a Boston. Of course, I'm always traveling, and the New York guys treat me kind of weird. But I'm a full time comic, and I'm living my dream. I'm really looking forward to the material that comes out of the move as well. And I'm sure the baby will grow into a better human away from LA. Really dang cool, brother. Thanks. Yeah, LA needs needs us to market for them, so I will for myself. And now I no longer need to be in LA. It's a hilarious math equation. Oh yeah, hilarious. All right, I'm <laughs> I'm done. I'm just gonna read what Owen says. Yeah, I'll be doing a lot of Northeast shows. I'll be in New York City, New York New York City way more now. It was my first ever post on Reddit. I'm getting better, hopefully, at formatting. <laughs> all right so uh reading between the lines he was I, I think he admitted that the reason why he left la is because he was he was he was not getting jobs his jobs dried up he had enough collateral to make the move and he did he got out while he could that's crazy to see that and then know how things have gone. And it's sad. Anyway, this is the Texas Go Radio Show. I'm your host, Victoria. As always, till next time.